Hello everybody and welcome back to the Let's Play series and yes, oh snappers, <laughs> it's officially here everybody, the 1.18 update is here, my head's racing, ideas are flowing, plans are being made, decisions need to be made. So yeah, let's get into it here guys, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of things to consider, so if you haven't been keeping up with the 1.18 update, if you don't know what it's about, it is not a content update. In any way <laughs> there's no new blocks there's no mo new mobs nothing like that 1.18 is part two of the cliffs and caves update and basically uh, even though it doesn't add anything new it, it's gonna completely change the way we play this game guys it's huge because it redoes the way the surface terrain generates it redoes the way the caves generate plus the world height has changed so we have an extra 64 blocks lower down we can go with caves plus another 64 blocks we can go up in the world for building and the other major thing is ore distribution and placement has completely changed as well so it still follows similar rules like you want to go to the bottom of the world for diamonds copper is higher up in the world that kind of stuff um oh there we go guys 320 is the new build limit it used to be 255 right this is what it looks like at the top of the world. I just wanted to check it out, see how it is. <laughs> uh, I wanted to see if I would get a funny feeling, you know. When the world height changed the first time, I got a funny feeling the first time I climbed up. But I think I'm kind of used to seeing the world uh, from higher up now. It doesn't really uh, affect me like it used to. <laughs> oh, let's go for a drop down though. That's a lot of heights. That is a lot of height, guys. I don't know if we're going to use it all, but we have it now if we want it and i guess if we're going to be talking about the ore changes let's just go find a cave right let's go look below the man cave see what we find because there are new caves <laughs> right below us now uh oh yeah and i wanted to show you this too uh these glowing squids they spawn over here which is kind of cool i tried putting like guardians in this water before to add some life to the man cave and they died on me but uh and squids don't spawn here so now we have glowing squid at least it'll it'll create a little bit of activity in the water there which is cool yeah, this part of the man cave isn't really uh, <clears throat> finished or anything like that, but maybe maybe we do something with it now. Maybe we do. Uh, we head down. Let's just dig right over here and see what happens, why don't we? So, how are we going to get through the bedrock is the big question. Hmm? Any ideas? Any plans? Well, turns out there is no bedrock. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm actually kind of happy about. Oh! Dude, where'd that come from? Oh, the gravel fell and there was lava on top. <laughs> actually, I think I do want to go to new terrain later just to check out a couple things. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm curious now. I was just thinking, like, Y11 is lava level, right? But it probably isn't anymore. Is there a new lava level or is there no lava level? I don't know. I gotta, I gotta look around the new terrain to figure that out. But, uh... My world's going to be a little bit wonky now because we have the old generation with the new generation. And in some ways I got the best of both worlds and in some ways it's just going to be kind of odd. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's check this out. So, the final four blocks that used to be here, that used to be like stone and bedrock mixed, have been replaced now. We now have deep slates under the man cave. They removed the bedrock layer and it just kind of keeps going now. And now there's going to be caves and, and stuff down here as well. So this is kind of cool. Like, I can actually get deep slates all over my world. Which was something I was a little worried about. Like, normally I'd have to go very far. Like, thousands of blocks away to get this stuff. And, uh, no, it's it's available everywhere. So that's cool. Oh, here we go. We got iron. Oh, snappers. We got some redstone, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we got clay, guys. Look at this. Okay, yeah, this is what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for, guys. Oh, snap. So this is below the man cave. There are so many bats. <laughs> what? What's going on down here? Dude, look at this, guys. Oh, I was a mile away. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
This is pretty awesome. Oh, we got glowing squids. Oh, this is one of those pools with like uh, the clay, the different layers. Oh man. So yeah, we're gonna be doing some stuff with this. <laughs> we'll get to that later though. Yeah, so ore distribution. This kind of shows it pretty well. So if we look ahead there, we got some iron, we got some redstone way up there. Even higher up, I see some redstone way up there. <laughs> There's some lower down stuff there. There's some diamonds way up there, iron there. So ores tend to generate at pretty wide varieties of heights, right? Um, but they do have preferences to certain Y levels where, where, where you'll find more of them. So for copper, it's like at Y48. Iron, Y16, lapis is zero. I think gold is minus 32. Or it might be minus 16. I can't remember that one. <laughs> and then diamonds and redstone, the further down you go, the better. You'll, you'll find more. Um, now, there's a bunch of nuances with that. Like, I think diamonds have a less likely chance of being shown on surfaces now. You mostly have to dig to find them. Uh, sometimes, though, like, that, that's an exposed one there, so it does happen. And yeah, check this out. We do have mine shafts and other structures generate in this lower part of the world as well. I've seen in my testing mob spawners forming down here. I've seen amethyst geodes. So basically everything spawns underground, which is cool. I double checked on the, the gold thing. It is at minus 16 is the prime layer and you get more in bases and there's also a second layer and it's complicated. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you look around minus 16 for it. Um, and then also diamonds, they first start showing up at 16 and then go all the way down to minus 64. So that's a huge range, but they're more common the lower you go down. And this is big, guys. Did you notice, like, what has happened here? <laughs> this is all deep slate, right? At the lower ground areas. So, diamonds show up in the lower ground areas, and it's deep slate in the lower ground areas. That means you can no longer speed mine diamonds in this, this update. Because <laughs> they're going to be forming in deep slate, the diamonds. And you can't insta mine this stuff even with haste too. So that means diamonds just got way more valuable, more, way more rare with this update. We got like one of these square rooms still, but without the dirt. Oh man, okay, so kind of important discovery here. I was, I was running through the mine shaft, right? And... I haven't seen any coal. All the coal generates up higher in the world. I'll live, I'll live. Yes. Um, not down here. So once you use up your torches, you can't make more. <laughs> you know, like before, if you ran out of torches, you just mine some coal, you carry some wood with you, and you make a bunch more, right? But uh, no, now you got to think ahead and actually bring enough coal with you to do it. Thankfully, I got an ender chest. I, I always have coal somewhere. I just got to be careful when I place this down that the, the creepers don't blow up all my life savings. Where's my coal? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Systems, guys. Systems. There we go. What does it mean when there's moss in the ceiling? Does that mean there's going to be a cave? Not necessarily. Interesting. Huh. I thought if I dug there, a cave would open up, but uh, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's clay, though. Aha! <laughs> okay. All right, I'm, I'm understanding the system here. I wanted to check out... Ooh, not down there. <laughs> Holy smokes. That's a death trap if I've ever seen one. Um, No, I wanted to check out that one chasm we just saw. Where was it? Oh, there's a mine shaft. Or a uh, mine cart. The cave has been relatively dangerous with, like, the mobs and stuff. Oh, yeah, you can get coal from the, the chests. Oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I don't think you'd get enough from that, though. Um, Let's go down here. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, there's lava level. Okay, so it's at minus 54. Uh, that's basalt. Oh, it's an amethyst. Geode. Oh, I gotta mark this. Yeah, yeah, it's a full geode. Awesome. Okay, that's a that's a big find. Um, I gotta do something here. I gotta do it. I I just gotta do it. 
Anyways, we could probably spend the whole episode exploring the new cave system, but I kind of want to keep things moving here, so let's let's continue on. I'll do a bunch of caving off camera just so I can get a, a feel for it and have some fun with it, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have a decision to make. Remember I said there was an important decision? So I have loaded up a brand new creative world here just so we can get an idea of how things look, how things feel. Um, because... New world, guys. No, no. <laughs> I know that's what you're all thinking. I think we're going to keep the old world still. I love that world. Um, and it's kind of at the point now, like 10 years more that we've been going. It feels bad to abandon that world. Um, it's kind of like a historical thing at this point. Um, so what we have to decide, though, is do we change it to use the new terrain on the surface? So... Let's just fly around here a bit, get a feel for it, get an idea for it. Um, as it turns out, I thought amplified terrain was going away and like we were forced to use this new uh, surface level terrain system. No, it turns out amplified is still in the game. My world is still set to amplified and it totally overwrites all this new stuff that, that has been added. So we need to decide, do we get rid of amplified and go with the new system or do we keep amplified and just forget about this? surface level stuff so just flying around here a bit i've noticed like it's definitely a lot nicer than it used to be um it's way more interesting than than the old terrain but it's still very vanilla <laughs> is, is what i'm noticing like there's still huge flat areas um there are definitely more hills now but they're always rolling hills they're not like jagged hills and uh these features, though, I think still apply to our amplified terrain if we generate new stuff, like where it has these big hollows, hollowed out holes and stuff. Uh, that we will still get in amplified, I think, from what I've seen. Do we use this new stuff, though? I'm kind of leaning towards no. I think I want to stick to amplified. So here's my here's my reasoning on that, by the way. And I'm, I'm willing to be persuaded if you guys have an argument to persuade me. I'm all ears, but like none of this terrain is like, wow, I got to build something there, right? It's all pretty, pretty standard, pretty tame for the most part. I think it is an improvement though over the original, but amplified, like when I see that stuff, it's like, wow, I really want to build something here, <laughs> you know? And I don't really get that as much with this, this new stuff, even though it's cool. Yeah, so with the new terrain system, there's definitely some dud spots. Like, we pretty much flew over entirely flat land there, which is not ideal. <laughs> but then there are some cool things. Like, this is a plains biome with a giant mountain in. Like, that's cool, right? You got the nice flat areas to build, and then you got the mountain in the background, which is kind of the dream. You got a river cutting through here. Like, I could see you doing something with this area. Okay, we're definitely in a more interesting area now. So let's just fly around here a bit more. It seems like it's going to be very seed dependent. Like you might get lucky or you might not. This terrain is way more interesting uh, with the new system. It's a bit more hilly around here. Uh, we got the jungle. It's my favorite biome in the game, I think. And then you got like big height variations happening over here. Big flat spots still for building, but you got the cool terrain around you, which is the dream. And then we got a mesa. I want to check out this. So there are definitely some cool areas. Yeah, this is cool. I like this. Okay, so what we just saw was 1.18 terrain in a random normal seed. Now this is 1.18 terrain in an amplified seed. So this is what we're competing against. Which do we prefer? <laughs> I think I prefer amplified. Uh, but I'm not going to make the decision today. I'm kind of leaning on you guys a bit for your feedback. What do you think as well? Uh, can you make an argument against this? I don't know. I am getting stutters. I don't know if it's because I just loaded this terrain and it's still settling, but that is a concern for sure. Stutters are not good, but uh, this is look pre looking pretty cool. <laughs> uh huh. So this is the new biome as well. This is the uh, dripstone caves. I don't know if it's supposed to spawn on the surface like this. Not too familiar with it, but it's doing it in Amplified, so there we go. Uh, and then this is the new Ice Peaks, I think. What's it called? Frozen Peaks. Yeah, so this goes right up to the very tippity-top of the world, 320. 
<laughs> yeah, terrain will go all the way up and amplified. Which means there's going to be tons of iron up here because it spawns super frequently at the very top of the world. If there's terrain there. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, for my play style, I'm thinking Amplified is better because I generally don't build, like, nice cities and villages and houses and stuff. I'm more of a wacky builder. And wacky terrain is maybe better suited to that. Oh, this is also the new terrain, or new biome. Sparse jungle. Oh, man, we got lucky. It's, like, all together here. Anyways, you know, it's something for us to think about. We don't need to decide right away, but like if we want to build a base somewhere new, like then we need to decide. <laughs> Which we might be doing, I don't know. But I kind of want to play around with the underground area to begin with, with this update. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. I am gathering some materials in our Let's Play here for Project Underground, okay? So the three main ingredients to Project Underground are going to be soul soil. We're going to need a ton of bricks. And we also need a bunch of TNT. Okay, so here we go, everybody. We are back down under the man cave in this cavern we found, ready to begin Project Underground. So, this is a bit of an odd idea. <laughs> I came up with it, like, the day before the update came out. I was like, I was trying to think, what should I do? What do I want to do? And I had this, this idea come to me, okay? Now, I've, I planned this out a bit. There's a couple different stages to this. It's going to be a little hard to explain all at once. So we'll just take it one step at a time. And first, I'm just going to show you what I'm actually going to be doing here. So it's very simple. We're going to put down soul sand. I think I wanted minus 415 as our center point. So, and I think we're going to make this five blocks wide. And what's our Y coordinate? 39 is probably good. Okay, so all we got to do is put down a layer of soul sand, five blocks wide. All right? And we're going to run this all the way to the wall there. Very simple, very simple. And then... <laughs> this, this stuff with the mobs. We're going to put down some brick stairs. Hello, creeper! Came to check out Project Underground as well, I see. Uh-huh, almost missed them there. Okay, then we get stairs on this side. And... Ignore the zombie, and then <laughs> slabs <laughs> like this. So this is all we got to build. It's very simple. There's not a lot to it. Souls, soil, and slabs. Uh-huh. So as you've probably already guessed here, what we're doing is we're building a path. This is our basic design for the path, and it's going to run through the underground cavern here. Have you ever seen one of those Minecraft videos where somebody, like, cuts uh, a long minecart track through a bunch of terrain, and then they ride through the terrain to show it off in the video. You know what I'm talking about? We're doing something similar here, but instead of like showing off the above ground terrain, we're going to show off the underground terrain and we're going to make it run through the caverns. Okay, so check it out everybody. We got our basic path in here and so far it's pretty cool, right? Like this did not take much effort. This is very simple and we can kind of check out a nice peripheral view of the, the cave as we walk through here. I think it's pretty neat. <laughs> and we put the soul soil under the slabs here so we get the soul speed effect from our boots. We can run along here much faster with that. Um, and yeah, so we want to keep this design fairly simple, like just the basic design so that we can get a lot of it done because we want to branch not just in this cavern, but to go to other caverns and kind of connect this highway to our entire underground. We're kind of using the the man cave as our hub for the underground and it's going to branch off from there to other parts of our world this is the underground highway um okay but now we've hit our first snag right we ran out of space to work with <laughs> and this is a much bigger snag than you might expect because as we've already looked or figured out we can't instant mine the deep slate right so when it comes to expanding, we're looking at a big problem here because this stuff is very time consuming to break. And if we were to dig out space for the highway there, oh my goodness, we are in trouble. Yeah, so it's very important we come up with some good tunnel bore strategy here for getting through the, the land. And this is what I'm planning. So we're going to go, I think two blocks up is what we're going to try. And then I'll have to dig these tunnels, these two by one man tunnels. There's no way around this. I just have to 
suck it up and do it basically <laughs> you can see throughout here we do have like some soft areas so the tunnel is gonna end up looking pretty varied i think but i just have to like dig this out and the goal is to connect this up to another one of these caverns now i happen to know i checked ahead there is a cavern directly in front of us here about a hundred or two hundred blocks ahead i think Yep, yep, check it out. Another cavern, guys. Another giant, massive hole underground <laughs> that we can take advantage of here. Uh, so the idea is we're gonna, gonna try to connect these all together. And there's lots of them. It, like, there's tons of these things scattered underground. Uh, most of them are quite, like, densely packed close together as well. This is a bit of a stretch compared to usual. Um, but now what we're gonna do is one of the fun things. <laughs> this is where the, the project gets expensive. Uh, I am not digging this out, there's no way. I have found in my testing that a double layer of TNT actually does a pretty good job on Deep Slate. But yeah, it is pricey. And we're just gonna run this through the whole tunnel. Okay, so it's just about six stacks of TNT for this first little stretch. Uh, I think we are good to go here. No mobs. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And... Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I fell in a hole. Okay. Back up, back up. Holy... Sorry, that was a little loud. <laughs> but yeah, it does a pretty decent job on the tunnel, right? Oh, it's still going. And I'm not. Whoa. Gotta keep up with it, otherwise it'll stop, I think. Alright. Very good. So that's a, a good amount of space. I don't know if I got the height right. Let's find that out in just a second. I just want to light it up so I don't get mobbed when I'm building the tunnel. <laughs> oh, it's getting bad on this end. <laughs> no! <laughs> We're good. We're fine. Everything's good. I got my tanky armor on. We're, I'm, I'm not taking any chances here. Okay, how are we lining up here? Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like two blocks up was probably the right call. Maybe we could have went for three. But I'm willing to do a little bit more digging. Uh, the idea is we want to have as much head space as possible. Like, as much up here. <laughs> Open up so it doesn't feel claustrophobic as we, we run through here. So we are probably about two to three hours into building, like non-stop building uh, at this point. It's not the most exciting building, I gotta say. <laughs> it's very repetitive. Uh, but at least we got great views, right? I I'm loving this second cavern. The second one is so cool. There's like multiple layers to it. Like up there, we got layers. We got like a cool cascading water structure there. It goes way far back over there. And, like, another layer up over there. I don't know how good it's going to pick up on YouTube. I know YouTube likes to artifact everything. There's a lot of clutter <laughs> in these cave systems. So, I think, like, if I was to clean this up... Oh, yeah, a lot of fish are spawning here, apparently. Uh, if I was to clean this up, I want to get rid of some of these glowberry bush or vine things. There's, like, way too many, I think. Uh, we also uh, probably want to hang some dripstone and stuff in here. But yeah, this is where it connects to our tunnel. And this this is like no polish. I haven't polished it up at all. And it's pretty good, right? It's not too bad, just raw the way it is. Uh, it is a fairly long tunnel. Very long path, too. <laughs> so that's where we're going to get into our next stage here, okay? So yeah, we got a long, uh, long straight path. And... As you run down here, even though we're moving very quickly, it kind of doesn't really feel like we're moving all that much, right? And that's by design. This is very important that the camera's not like going all over the place as we run through here. That there's not too much happening for stage two. Yeah, so there's actually like a bunch of different reasons I wanted to build this path thing today. And one of them was just, I thought it'd be a great way to check out the caverns, like from a safe observation deck kind of thing <laughs> we can look down we don't have to worry about getting mobbed when we're up here you know it, it's it's kind of nice right um the other thing though another main reason for this path is it's going to function as a transportation system in our world and i was messing around in creative the other day 
And I figured something out, okay? Something I thought was pretty interesting and I haven't seen before. Maybe somebody's done it before and I just haven't seen it, but uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so this is going to be a way for us to play around with it and uh, just show it off to you guys as well. So what we got to do for stage two here is flood this uh, whole middle thing. Now it's not going to flow off the edge or anything. Nope, we're good. So I'm, I got a ways to go here. I, we're about 400 blocks long with this path at the moment. We will try to expand it more in the future, but I'm out of bricks for right now. Cool. All right. So we got it flooded all the way down there. We are ready to move on to the next thing. You can see we're still moving quickly through the water. As long as we got Depth Strider 3, the water doesn't really slow us down. And we are still getting the soul speed effect. You see the particles are still appearing through the water even. So that's cool. And the reason I built this out of bricks, by the way, even though it's kind of a... It's not really an expensive block, but you got to trade with villagers for it. Um, it, is it kind of works good with the, the green color of the vines and the moss and that, as well as with the blue, and it looks pretty good with the deep slate as well, so it's kind of a good all-around color for down here. Uh, okay, so next up, we gotta get this thing ready to go. We are gonna need to move a dolphin down here for Dolphin's Grace, and my plan is to set this up like so. Soul sand over there. We're gonna drop them down from the ceiling here. And then we'll just piss them into place. So I'll just set this up for them like that. And I gotta go up and like drill a hole all the way down here somehow. <laughs> How do I do that actually? Let me... I think the way to do it... Wait. I gotta go like up and then I gotta come back down again. So I'm gonna pillar up right where I wanna go up. And dig the hole up and then I'll just dig my way down after. Oh. Oh no, we hit the cactus farm. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so this is the tricky part of the whole thing. Uh, the closest ocean to our base is not not the guardian farm. That's not an ocean. Um, it's quite far away, actually. It's like 800 blocks or so from the man cave. We gotta go all the way over here. This is also is not ocean. This is just a lake over here. But I have found a little little piece of ocean. Right over here. Oh, it's updating. <laughs> it's loading very slow. Yeah, right here is ocean. Aha, uh -huh. so we got to get a dolphin or a few of them from here and bring them over. All right, we got a couple of them here. So let's name these guys Speedy so they don't despawn as we're moving them. Where's the other guy? Is it you? Stay still. <laughs> All right, then we're going to lead them. Okay, and then we got to give them some water breathing, I think. Okay, then they can move out, out of the water without dying. No, oh, stay put, Speedy! Stay put, Speedy! No! Okay. It didn't quite work. <laughs> oh, man. It's because the water wasn't supposed to come down with him. He was just supposed to fall through the air. Come on, Speedy. Come on, Speedy. Let's get it up. No! Oh, he's so dumb. It's my fault. Um, yeah, so this is speedy number four. <laughs> Hasn't been going the best. Oh, you, you kind of... Oh, no. How do I unattach him? I don't know. Uh, this is a problem. He's going to put the block there and swim away, and then the leech break. And he'll fall down. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh, why is this so tough? It's so hard to move a dolphin. Did he fall? Is he there? Speedy? He's there. Okay. Okay, and he's got an item. He's happy. Let's just block this and we're done. I tried the piston thing and I squished one of the dolphins somehow with it. So this just worked better. Okay. <laughs> we caught him in place. That's all that matters. Okay, let's get rid of this piston. Let's get rid of all this garbage. I had a creeper blow up on one of them, and uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's been tricky. Now, it's very important. If you ever want to store a dolphin, you gotta keep him in a bubble column like this. I got soul sand with water above. He's forced in that. He can't get out of it. Uh, if you just give him water with air above, they will eventually die. So, yeah, this is a safe way of doing it, though. And you have to name tag them so they don't despawn when you leave the area. Okay. 
So let's get to the trick now. <laughs> so I was messing around with it and I found a way to get the dolphin's grace to work outside of water. Like you have to be touching water, but you can have your head out of water, which is kind of cool. That's what we're trying to do here. So we're going to mine up five block patch here. Then we will have stairs over on this end, stairs on this end, and let's see here. I wish I had more bricks. <laughs> I think I'm going to build this up. Now the mobs are still getting up here. I thought I, I took care of that. Okay. Yeah, this, this area is going to need a bit of work still. Uh, then what we're going to do here is just get some temporary dirt blocks, fence gates. That I tried this with signs and it behaved differently. So you got to be pretty picky on how you set this up. Uh, and then fence gates opened on this side. Break the dirt blocks. And now, actually, I'm going to put some slabs over here. Just for now. So that when I place water against that, it's not going to fill up the slab spot. <laughs> okay. And then uh, water fill in this area. And we're creating like a little booster station for the, the dolphin's grace. Oh, I fall down. Don't creeper. Don't creeper. Uh, okay. So yeah, check it out. All we gotta do is hold sprint and forward. And booyah! <laughs> we got Dolphin's Grace for a few seconds, right? But we go uh, pretty fast with it. Uh, and this is also a two-way booster. So we can use it going the other way as well. Uh, so check this out. Hold forward and control. Boom! Uh-huh. You can go out of the water for a bit and then go back in and you will still have the speed boost as well. It's kind of a fun thing to play around with. Oh, out of the water, in the water, out of the water. Reboost. <laughs> uh-huh. So the idea is we're going to have these booster stations set up every few hundred blocks in here. And we'll be able to zip through the tunnels very quickly. I don't know if I can, like, look around as we're going. Oh, not safely. And the really crazy thing about that, that wasn't even the max speed. We weren't under the effects of speed 2, which gives you 40% more speed. So <laughs> if we set up beacons and stuff with that, uh, yeah, we'll go even faster. Let's try it out with speed 2. And I was worried this might get a little too fast, though, honestly. Uh, so we, we might need to do some adjusting. Yeah, we made it way past the water. So we... Last time, without the speed 2, we only made it to about here before it stopped. This time, we made it all the way to the end. So it's definitely faster. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So if it's too fast, if we want to slow it down, there's a couple things we could do. We can get rid of the soul speed on our boots. We can get rid of uh, speed 2 from a beacon. Like, if we want to control the speed and, like, take a more scenic tour. <laughs> uh, but if we want to go really fast, we have that option as well. Oh, man. I also wanted to check out... Really? Uh, if we can uh, get this to activate with our elytra. What happens? Oh, yeah. we. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be something, too. So if we want to take off in the middle of our run and, like, go somewhere in the, the cavern here, we can. <laughs> Let's try that again. This is still, like, I haven't played around with this fully. There's still some things I'm figuring out with it. Uh, yeah, okay. So with Elytra, you can take off just from the ground. Which is pretty awesome. I like that. Not very quickly, though. There might be a way to do it better. Let's try again. Oh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta double tap space very quickly. The faster you do it, I think the faster you will take off. Ah, it's so much fun. <laughs> but anyways, I do have a stage three in mind with this plan. If we want to develop it further, we won't have time today. But the idea for stage three is we actually start building in these caverns. Like some of them will probably keep organic like this. But how cool would it be if we actually like start setting up farms down here? Maybe building custom biomes or building trees. Like if you think about it, each one of these caverns could function as its own... Uh, pocket basically like it could have its own biome its own purpose 
and it's got all this space already hollowed out for us, there's a lot we could do, right? Imagine, like, the highway here, if we turn it into, like, uh, almost like a bridge running across here. I think that would look cool. That oh! Is that a creeper? <laughs> I am, like, having a hard time with the mobs today, guys. These guys have be been giving me a hard time all day, trust me. Uh, but the other idea with stage three, if we actually like start building stuff on the layers, like there's layers up here, uh, this will also function with Riptide. And we can like hop between the layers. There's another layer over there we could hop to, then we could hop back to our highway. You know, I could see it being pretty, pretty cool and fun, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we might do more with it. I'll see what you guys say about it, what you think of it. Uh, but that's probably as far as we'll get with it today. But yeah, it's that time again, guys. Let's wrap up our episode with the comment of the day. It says, hey, Etho, whatever happened with the note block music? I really liked it. I really liked it, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this has been asked a whole ton. I thought I'd give a, a clear answer to you guys just so you're not confused anymore about this. So I first started doing the note block thing because I thought it would be a, a good challenge to myself to kind of force myself to learn how to like convert music from sheet music or from tabs or whatever to actual Minecraft music. It's actually kind of challenging because you're limited to two octaves in, in, in Minecraft and only a certain number of instruments. So it was a great challenge, right? I learned a lot doing that about how music works and all that. But uh, the other thing is I thought I was legally allowed to do it because I'm actually generating the music on my own computer, right? It's a original work. <laughs> So I thought, uh, no, it turns out there's something called a melody copyright claim, which I very quickly learned. Uh, a bunch of my videos actually got claimed for that. Uh, no surprise there. So that started to become an issue. I stopped using like music you would hear on the radio and just pretty much limited myself to video game music. Uh, it turns out like even Nintendo's claiming video game music these days so that's not exactly a safe area either i technically don't have the right to copy any music is what it comes down to <laughs> so oh that kind of sucks so it's, it's more like what can i get away with if i do continue to do it and that doesn't feel quite right right um i did kind of limit myself down to just video game music though and i found like a lot of songs were hard to turn into note blocks because it's actually challenging to do that like to take a a song with lots of different notes, lots of different octave ranges, and bring it into Minecraft is not easy, right? The music I found most, or that was easiest to do that with, was Super Nintendo music. So that's what I was mostly doing. And then I kind of ran out of, like, good songs to do with that. So <laughs> if I kept doing the note block thing, I'd just kind of keep repeating the same music that I've already done. And, like, the challenge is gone for me. So it's not as fun for me anymore and it would get repetitive for you guys. So I just kind of stopped doing it is what it came down to. Uh, I did really enjoy it though. And uh, that's where we're at now. Thank you for the question. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Hope you have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.